and welcome back. Uh, this is Tom Burton from Providence Holy Cross, the program of Providence Holy Cross Health Hour. Uh, here at KHTS, 1220 AM, your hometown station, coming to you live from this uh, Newhall studio and uh, really absolutely enjoying uh, our conversation today uh, with Stacy Williams, who is from Providence Holy Cross, old colleague of mine and, and uh, uh, physical therapist extraordinaire. Uh, for those of you who uh, happen to be traveling outside of the Santa Cruz Valley right now, make sure that you uh, get the app for KHTS, which is available for your Android and for your uh, iPhone. Uh, it takes about 20 seconds to download that, and that way you can pick up KHTS anywhere you are. Uh, and specifically, with as crazy as it's been uh, with weather, with the heat, and with the fires, and everything that's going on, one of the easiest uh, decisions was was just keep KHTS on uh, to be able to know where you can drive, where you can't drive, and what all's going on with the fires. And were you impacted at all? Yeah, no, we didn't. We have friends that lived um, over on the Stevenson Ranch side and Southern Oaks, and um, so yeah, we were very concerned about a couple of our friends. So, but thankfully, wow, the firefighters just did an amazing job, and and you know the structure protection that they laid down, it was amazing to watch. For the number of fires that we have, and and uh, and the such, I I don't know that that we could absolutely go another day uh, without throwing an applause out to all of the firefighters, uh, both who were there and volunteering to uh, uh, to assure our safety. Uh, the the size of the fires that we've been dealing with and are presently going on, uh, and the amount of structures that they've been able to save, uh, is absolutely astounding. So our hats go off. Uh, to everyone who's been able to to help in the endeavor and trying to keep everything safe during this time. It's been a really difficult time, and I know there's a bunch of fires out there. Uh, yeah. Amazing. My uh, my parents live up on Vista Ridge, and they a lot of the super scooper helicopter. It's not the super scoopers, but the water heli water dropping helicopters. Um, go to the little lake at Vista Valencia golf course and pick up water there. And so we were at my parents' house watching, and I'll tell you, yeah, talking about hats go off to um, those helicopter pilots are just amazing. I mean, the, and so then my daughter and I actually did, as we were driving home, we watched them go over to Vista Valencia and we watched them do a couple of pickups and, and get the water and, and fly off. And I mean, talk about precision and just amazing talent, those, it, those gentlemen. Absolutely amazing talent. And, and women. And all, all. And, uh, uh, you know, and all of the information that you would need, you're going to find on KHTS, especially dealing with Santa Cruz Valley, being able to get in, get out, and while driving around and being around in the area. So uh, you can find them on uh, uh, on the interweb uh, without too much problem, and uh, also on the app, uh, you'll be able to get right into the uh, site, check out all the previous podcasts and all the live shows and the such. Uh, definitely well worthwhile. And here. Uh, with Holy Cross, uh, KHTS has been a, a huge, huge supporter of what we do, uh, and uh, it can't be any more appreciated than, uh, as well, giving us the opportunity to be able to uh, present Holy Cross to the Santa Cruz Valley, uh, kind of in a more uh, 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 formal way uh, to let them know all what's going on. And today we're going to be talking about rehab for the next, uh, you know, this next segment, and trying to actually get a good feel as far as what types of things are available. And now, as the inpatient physical therapist director, physical therapy director, um, what is the group that you're working with? Tell me, tell me a little bit about the inpatient side of rehab. Well, and it's funny, I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, when people think of physical therapy, they're like, oh, I've got this pain in my knee or, you know, my elbow or, you know, my, my golf swing every time I'm my back. Um, so people really do think mostly about the outpatient or the sports side of physical therapy. But um, physical therapy, just like medicine, has multiple, multiple specialties that people can go into. Um, so when I graduated from physical therapy school, I had worked inpatient um, on affiliations as students were required to go out and do clinical affiliations and um, get our hands wet and our skills um, at an actual clinic or hospital. Um, so I did a lot of hospital-based clinical affiliations and I really enjoyed it. Um, and then as I got out and started working more, I started working a lot with the neurological populations. So um, as a new graduate um, at the hospital that I worked at when I was a new grad, we had a large neuro population. So spinal cord injury, patients who'd suffered a stroke, um, Parkinson's disease, um, 
you know, trauma. I worked at a trauma center. So my first three years as a physical therapist was at a level one trauma center. So um, again, multiple fractures, um, head injuries, and, and really that kind of became my love. So I think a lot of people go into physical therapy school thinking sports medicine and I'm going to do orthopedics and I'm going to fix people's tennis elbow and tendonitis like I had. Um, but then they realize like, wow, there's a lot of facets to physical therapy, um, much more than people are aware of. And I think inpatient physical therapy is part of that. Um, when patients are admitted to the hospital, um, often the first thing that suffers greatly is their mobility. Um, they're confined to a hospital bed, um, they're on bed rest for a period of time, and it's amazing the amount of strength people can lose quickly um, on bed rest. And so inpatient physical therapy is actually there to get those patients out of that bed and mobilize and start to deal with whatever diagnosis um, they have been handed at that admission. So oftentimes it's just a worsening of something they've already had, or sometimes it's a brand new diagnosis of a stroke, um, or possibly that they just found out that they've got cancer, or, um, and we are the ones there trying working with the nurse and that interdisciplinary team at the bedside to really get that patient moving again and back into their life and back home um, and, and, and getting that function back. You know, I'm glad you brought that up too because, you know, the, the goal is to try to restore function as best as we can or restore a reasonable level of function to at least get back uh, home safely and I think safely is the one of the big keys and, and um, one of the things that I I marvel at on a daily basis because in my role I'm following a lot of the total joint replacement patients that are uh, coming through the hospital and physical therapy is there the day that they have surgery they're there they wake they get the patient up patients are walking they 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 foster a sense of security uh, and confidence that they can do it. Uh, you know, sometimes with therapy you are a bit of a rah-rah uh, where you actually have to kind of cheer them on and let them know that everything will be fine. And, and what we're able to do is, is see that these patients are now able to do what our hope is, is be able to walk household distances, be able to get in and out of bed and be able to get, get in and out of chairs and be able to get in and out of yep. the car and be able to, uh, uh, you know, handle, uh, maneuver around curbs and stairs and the such safely so that we can get back into familiar surroundings and get out of the hospital environment and we're primarily most of the things with the hospital environment is people are, are now more sick than coming in for elective problems. Um, and so that my hat goes off to the your inpatient crew for being able to do that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a big change and I, I think it's hard. We still get um, people that come into the hospital that say, oh, well, no, I, I can't go home. You know, I, I need to stay in the hospital longer. And, and that's an old mindset, unfortunately, is that, um, you know, hospitals are, are places where you go when you're really sick um, and you stay until you're better, but better enough to go home and continue to recuperate at home, um, not to just stay in the hospital. Um, People tend to be much more mobile when they're at home. Um, there's less risk of infection when you're at home. You know, unfortunately, you know, hospitals, people there have infections and, and illnesses that, that we're dealing with. Once people are healthy enough to go home, we want them to go home and continue to recuperate in that setting. And that's why there are home health agencies now, um, outpatient therapy centers that they can progress to. Um, but the sooner you go home, often the better it is. Right. And, and, and that's a different mindset than in the past. And it's quieter. I mean, that's yeah. one of the things, if you've ever been in the hospital and stayed in the hospital, you actually have a very difficult time sleeping unless it's a medicated sleep because it is the dang of activity required yep. to allow people to get better sometimes can get in the way of even being able to get yeah. a decent night's sleep. Hospital, so. Yeah, hospitals are a 24-7 business and there are people with pain at 3 a.m. and there are people that are trying to get up to a a commode or a bedside toilet um, at 3 a.m. and unfortunately if you're next door and trying to sleep and they're having a major issue um, there's a lot of noise and there's yeah. a lot of, of things going on and so oftentimes it is not a place of rest it's a place for healing um, but but as soon as patients are able to mobilize safely, like you said, and return to their home situation, um, we often see that they do much better. They sleep better, they heal better, um, they are more mobile because they're not confined to a hospital bed. They get up, they do more activities, um, and we see better recovery. 
And I love the fact that you brought up that it is a team a team approach. And part of that team, when we're looking at rehab in general, isn't just physical therapy, um, though that seems to be the term that gets thrown out an awful lot, but it's occupational therapy, working on those basic self-care skills and speech therapy, not only just on the ability to talk, but the actual ability to determine is it safe to be swallowing, uh, working on um, uh, different memory processes and the such like that. And all those are offered, correct? Definitely. So we have a quite a large department. Um, we're committed to really making sure we can staff and see our patients that we need to um, and that they get the daily therapy that they need. Um, we have uh, an inpatient occupational therapy supervisor um, and also a speech therapy supervisor. Um, and so on the inpatient side, I think there is sometimes confusion between, you know, people always say, oh, it's physical therapy. Well, like you said, there's multiple disciplines. Um, occupational therapy um, is actually an amazing branch of the therapy services. And I think people get confused sometimes on the inpatient side. They're like, I, I love it. I had a little lady one time, she was in her 80s, and she says, you know, the occupational therapist came in and said, I'm here to do your occupational therapy. And she said, oh, dear, I'm retired. I really don't have an occupation. And it's like, no, it's, you know, occupational therapy is not just your occupation. Um, on an outpatient basis, it often is that, work hardening, um, getting people to be able to recover function and return to their work. Um, but it's actually activities of daily living and what occupies your time. So occupational therapy actually works on um, getting people to be able to do those type of activities that they enjoyed prior to their diagnosis or prior to their hospitalization um, and be able to return to those things. So in the hospital, the biggest focus is most likely on activities of daily living. So are they able to brush their teeth, comb their hair, do the basic daily tasks that we take for granted, um, but now that they've had a stroke or a broken hip, um, how do they get their socks on? How do they dress? Um, how do they get on and off the toilet and manage themselves in the bathroom and wash their hands and stand at the sink? Um, all of those things we do so regularly, we take for granted when we're in pain um, or when we're not able to mobilize like we did before. So occupational therapy is critical for those patients to um, help them recover that function or gain a new strategy on how to do that function within their new disability. Right, so. and then and then the the concept of healing requires uh, you know fantastic nutrition and hydration, be able to take medications and yep. the such, and uh, that's where a lot of times we I, I on the floors I see speech therapy yep. getting involved, where they're calling in for a consult so that that speech therapy can actually take a look, maybe through the assistance of fluoroscopy with the radiology radiologic department, where they'll actually watch the anatomy and what's happening to make a clear determination of whether or not. Uh, can they eat? Can they swallow? You know, what thicknesses would be permitted to allow for specific diets? And and the skills required of that yeah. um, uh, is tremendous. And, and it's great to be able to offer that uh, service as well for our patients, uh, not only for uh, their general ability to get better, uh, but also to assure that we're not going to be causing problems in the future. Right. And again, I think it's, it's that misnomer. You know, with occupational therapy, they think it's re related to an occupation. With speech therapy, be, they're like, but I'm talking, you know, my speech is fine. Um, but speech therapy actually encompasses quite a bit more than just um, language um, and speech. They work with cognition, so especially for our brain injured patients, for patients who have trouble with short term memory or attention span or um, the ability to um, speak after a brain injury and find words and organize their thoughts. Um, those are all things that speech works on and, and the cognitive aspect of speech therapy is something that is often overlooked and, and not people don't realize that's something they do. And then yes, the swallowing is a huge aspect. Um, patients in the hospital as they get weak will often have trouble swallowing um, and that leads to the risk of something called aspiration. So if a patient aspirates, it means even just the saliva that you and I normally swallow without trouble when somebody is weak, that can actually just go into the lungs and cause pneumonia. Um, so when they aspirate those fluids into the lung, it can lead to significant debility and pneumonia and often life-threatening infection if it does not get um, managed. So speech therapy will, will evaluate people swallow um, and then recommend diets. So oftentimes after a stroke or a brain injury, um, someone may have to have a modified diet, you know, uh, thickened liquids or some kind of pureed food so they can better manage their food and lessen the risk of aspiration or or trouble with nutrition. Right, and, and even, <clears throat> excuse me, even in the uh, uh, 
uh, as we were talking with the uh, City of Hope, uh, I'm sorry, Ch uh, Children's Hospital coming on, we now have a, uh, a very vibrant uh, and busy NICU, uh, neonatal ICU, and we'll actually see our, our rehab staff actually going into the ICU as well. Very busy in the NICU, yeah, and that was something that was an amazing addition as we expanded several years ago. Um, we now have a 14-bed NICU, um, and they're looking to actually expand that because of the need of the community um, for additional NICU beds um, and to care for those babies. And yeah, we do have a team of occupational, physical, and speech therapists that rotate down to the NICU um, and serve that population. And it's a niche that isn't commonly found and so we're we're pretty lucky over at Holy Cross to be able to offer that and uh, uh, I was just given a uh, couple minutes for the next break but I, I uh, uh, moving from the inpatient we have the, a full continuum of care and we actually Absolutely. then can progress into the outpatient. I think probably for the last uh, our last uh, few minutes in the segment we'll talk a little bit about the outpatient that's going on uh, over at uh, Holy Cross whether it be PT occupational therapy and speech therapy not only uh, pe pediatric as well as adult uh, as well as taking a look at our neurologic and our orthopedic and sports medicine uh, and I believe also including hand too so and then one of the offshoots that uh, isn't often available nowadays is we are beginning women's health yep huge and, field uh, right now. and just had a recent had a, a wonderful seminar that uh, we we hosted uh, for the community of uh, therapists out there and we we were able to then move on uh, also with a very uh, uh, extensive uh, uh, lymphedema program as well. So uh, an awful lot of things going on with rehab. I don't actually think we can encapsulate it in, in just a single hour, and I know we'll have to revisit it, but let's touch on that just very briefly uh, when we come back from this next break. Uh, you're uh, with the Providence Health Hour, Providence Holy Cross Health Hour here on KHDS AM 1220, your hometown station. Hey, Santa Carita, thank you for joining us back for the last uh, portion of the segment with uh, Providence uh, Holy Cross Health Hour. We are enjoying our time here at KHDS AM 1220, your hometown station, in the beautiful Newhall Studios with Stacy Williams, the inpatient uh, physical therapy director at Providence Holy Cross. And we've kind of taken a look at um, Stacy in general and, and, the, and the drive to move on and help people, which uh, seems to be inherent to most therapists and uh, uh, no better seen than in the inpatient arena. But then patients, as we said, they're by that by the the time inpatient, uh, inpatient therapy's done their work and the medical staff has helped them through their illness or the such, uh, patients are now transitioning home and once they're home, a lot of the times they still haven't, they haven't restored their functional activity and their, their functional well-being up to a part where it would be par for their normal everyday lifestyle. And so uh, it's not an uncommon thing where they're going to go ahead and bring outpatient rehabilitation involved. And uh, my understanding is over at Holy Cross, we have a, a very, very uh, uh, extensive uh, rehab program offering from physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, orthopedic sports medicine, neurologic, cardiac rehab, uh, pediatrics, um, lymphedema, yep. and now venturing to, into women's health. Is there anything that we're not able to treat? <laughs> I mean, again, I think it's just a testament to the field of physical therapy and occupational therapy and speech um, in that there is um, so many there are so many specialties now um, and so many niche populations and niche um, career paths to take in the rehabilitation medicine field. Uh, and we see that, like you said, in our outpatient setting, um, we, we definitely on the inpatient side, we see a lot of neurologic patients, we see orthopedic patients, and those are kind of the common themes that you see in physical therapy and occupational therapy. Um, but yeah, lymphedema, which is the management of um, swelling after lymph resection. So patients who've gone through some kind of cancer diagnosis, um, if they've had lymph nodes removed from the groin or from the, um, from the axillary or shoulder region, they end up having issues with swelling. Um, the lymph actually is a drainage system for the water and other fluids and debris from the body to go back towards the heart. Well, if you have lymph node resection and those are taken out, that water and fluid can't get 
out of the extremity. So it's equivalent to closing two lanes on the 405 South uh, yes. first thing in the morning. Yes, or the truck lanes closed backup. on the truck lanes closed closed on the southbound five for us uh, Santa Clarita residents. And that creates the backup. So that is our own version of uh, automobile yes. lymphedema. So and so again, that, that amount of swelling in the extremity can be severe sometimes for these patients. And lymphedema is a way to help manage that swelling, um, get that fluid out of the extremity. And they also use wrapping and different types of pumps to move the fluid out. Um, but it really can restore amazing function and life value for patients th that have gone through lymph node resection and had lymphedema um, because oftentimes they've become non-ambulatory or they don't like to go out because they have this huge amount of swelling and, and non-functional arm or leg. Um, and lymphedema can restore that and they and they can go back to the life they enjoyed. It's perfect timing too to have such a robust program such as that uh, now that uh, we have such a strong affiliation with City of Hope yep. and being able to bring uh, the the highest level of uh, cancer right. care to yep. Holy Cross and to the Santa Clarita Valley. And we have lymphedema here in Santa Clarita actually at the um, Providence Facey Building in um, on Valencia and McBean. Uh, we have an outpatient um, physical therapist that treats lymphedema here in the Santa Clarita Valley. And then we also have two of our therapists, one occupational therapist, one physical therapist at our Mission Hills location that does lymphedema um, and like you said we're adding women's health now so patients with incontinence issues it's used to be called women's health it's now called pelvic floor um, but pelvic floor for both men and women um, is a way for therapists to help them with incontinence issues and bladder issues. Um, at, at this time, we're doing the women's health at Holy Cross, but that will eventually expand. But yeah, outpatient neuro is very hard to find at a physical therapy clinic. Often you go to a local clinic, they just really specialize in sports med and ortho. Um, we have neurologic therapists down at Holy Cross that deal with stroke and spinal cord injury and head injury um, and really help those people continue their rehabilitation after their hospital stay. And I think one of the pieces with Holy Cross too is that a lot of the times when you think of about of a hospital-based uh, outpatient physical therapy program, you really think of the the uh, uh, the person who's had the stroke. Yet uh, we're lucky enough to have staff that are extremely skilled in manual therapy and orthopedic care. Absolutely. So, so a lot of our therapists do both neurologic and and orthopedic. So again, a stroke patient can have orthopedic issues. Um, so it's just amazing the amount of talent we have at our facility. And like you said, hand therapy. Um, we do some pediatrics. We have NICU therapists that also see infant follow-up clinics down at Holy Cross. So an amazing field, an amazing staff. Um, we, we just have a lot going and, and we welcome people to come and see our services. So we need to make sure they know how to get there. So uh, we know we can call the directly to the hospital at 818-365-8051. Uh, you can get also to 888-HEALING-432-5464. But uh, the actual number to the department for rehab uh, for any questions or further conversation would be... 818 496 4529 is our direct number and uh, if you send us a prescription we'll we'll get you hooked up that's fantastic well thank you very much Stacy I really appreciate Pleasure. you taking the time out of today and and uh, uh, you did fantastic <laughs> and uh, thank you Santa Clarita for hanging out with us uh, yet again we'll see you next uh, month third Wednesday uh, third Wednesday from 12 to 1 uh, thank you again to KHTS and you're with KHTS the am 1220 hometownstation.com see you later